is going to be borrowable uh, fractional ownership types for verification. <laughs> and uh, the talk will be given by Takashi. <coughs> So uh, let me sign my presentation. Uh, I'm Takashi Nakayama from the University of Tokyo. Uh, I'm, today I'm going to talk about our research in verbal fractional ownership for types for verification. This is a research summary, uh, and our research is about automatically uh, verifying that the program with mutable references uh, does not involve uh, the assertion failure uh, in runtime. And uh, we solve this problem by uh, translating the original problem uh, to the more pure, pure uh, functional programs. And our research is about uh, its combination of two existing methods uh, leveraging the ownership types. Uh, one is consort, and uh, another is Rusthorn. And both uh, these two both uh, use the ownership types in so different manner that uh, they serve as a complementary to each other. So let's move on to the background of our research. Uh, again, the target of our research is uh, the program with mutable <coughs> references. And this kind of progr program is uh, known to be difficult uh, to verify uh, due to aliasing <coughs> references. Uh, for example, uh, this is a, a simple, uh, simple program with mutable references uh, that the naive verification method uh, fails to handle. And the comments on the right side is a naive refinement type uh, trying to verify this program. At the first line, uh, sorry, at the first line, uh, the variable x is initialized as a reference that contains the integer value zero. And uh, the refine, the a type of x initialized as like this. And that's the second line. Oh, thank you. And at the second line, uh, the y is initialized as the aliasing references to x. And the type of y is, uh, copy, is the copy of the type of x. The problem arises at the third line because uh, now here, uh, y is updated to have the integer value 1. And at the same time, the aliasing reference, reference x is also updated to have value 1. Now, however, uh, while well, well, we change, successfully change the y's type, uh, the naive refinement type fails to update the type of x. And therefore, uh, that, that results in the verification failure uh, so, as we uh, as we see the types, uh, it says that the sum of x and y is zero uh, is one. However, uh, indeed, it is two because it's one plus one. From now, uh, I will explain the two existing approach to tackle this problem uh, using ownership types. The first one is consort. Uh, a consort applies a fun fractional ownership. To refinement types, uh, where uh, real number or uh, quotient number R uh, are given to uh, each references as their ownership. And here, uh, the R equals zero means no ownership, and R equals one means uh, the full ownership. Uh, this example pro uh, program is yeah, a little bit modified, uh, almost the same as the former one, and that confirms the sum of x and y equals 2. However, uh, the comments on this page is a type, uh, typing from the consort type system. The difference from the naive one is the, the here. Uh, we can see the refinement uh, reference uh, type have uh, ownership 1 in its type and on the upper part of the type. So, so then at the second line, uh, the reference y deprives x of uh, its, all of its ownership and refinement. And therefore, uh, the refinement of x uh, 
becomes to have no information about its content as like true. <coughs> and uh, since X has zero, uh, no information about its content, uh, we don't have to update the refinement of X. Uh, well, the Y is updated. Uh, and updated and however uh, we should retrieve the the information of the content of X because uh, to verify the that line because it's used as the content of X so to do this uh, console <coughs> utilizes the alias information again by the separate alias analysis so that uh, we can redistribute ownership uh, to uh, X and Y yeah, in this example, uh, the alias analyzer uh, can detect that uh, X and Y as alias uh, easily. So, consort can insert the, the annotation of alias X equals Y here, and uh, yeah, and then thanks to this consort uh, type system can redistribute the refinements and ownership to X and Y, and and we can see that uh, the assertion of the last, li uh, last line uh, successfully uh, verifies. And here, uh, the ownership of 0 0.5 means the ref references are read-only. That, uh, that is, uh, the X and Y can be read, but cannot be updated. Uh, sorry. So let's move on to the, um, uh, the other approach named Rust Horn. Uh, Rustlehorn is a verification method for the Rust programming languages, and which has a unique ownership type. Uh, we call it borable ownership with lifetime. So this is an example of, of the Rust typing. It is not refinement types, but yeah, in the Rust type system, the reference type is endowed with the lifetime, uh, which uh, indicated by the alpha or beta here. And, and this represents the abstract point at which the, those references are not used anymore. In this example, yeah, now X has a lifetime alpha and Y has a lifetime beta. In addition, uh, Rust type system has a unique feature uh, named borrowing, uh, which allows uh, the temporary lending of the ownership during a certain lifetime. In this example, uh, the reference Y is borrowed, uh, uh, sorry, the reference Y borrows the ownership of X during the li its lifetime beta, as seen in the diagram. And uh, during this borrowing, uh, Rust type system uh, disables the type of X uh, type of X here. <coughs> so, and another key point is that uh, we have an annotation of a lifetime beta here, and this means that uh, white lifetime beta it ends here, and this is uh, inserted by the lifetime analysis by the Rust compiler. And this enables Rust type system uh, to dispose of the reference Y here and uh, re-enable uh, re the type of X here. And we can use it again here. So once typed, uh, Rusthorn can distinguish, uh, Rust can distinguish whether each reference is, it are borrowed references or not. And uh, using this borrowing information, uh, Rusthorn conducts verification by eliminating uh, old references uh, by converting it, them to the pairs. So this is an example conversion for this program. Uh, this is a bit complicated, but the key point is that the borrowing reference Y is uh, converted to a pair of YC and YO here. And here, yc is the no, uh, normal integer that represents the current value of y. And 
while L is the non-deterministic integer that represents the future value of y at the end of the lifetime of beta. Now, thanks to this translation, uh, we can see that you know, here yc has a value, integer value 1, and looking at the assert statement, uh, ah, sorry, <coughs> and this assumed statement uh, means that the formally no non-deterministic integer yo has actually a value, now uh, integer value 1, so by looking at the third line, uh, we can see that the x equals 1. And finally, we can easily confirm that the, the assert statement at the last line would never fail. So let's move on to our proposal. So we have seen uh, two existing approach. Uh, consort uses fractional ownership, uh, which uh, is good at quantitative ownership sharing and Rusthorn uh, utilizes the uh, aliasing information in its typing. On the other hand, uh, Rusthorn uses borable ownership, uh, which is good at temporal ownership sharing, and Rusthorn uh, utilizes lifetime information in its typing. So the idea, uh, the idea of our research is combining these two to get the more flexible method now we propose uh, borable fractional ownership types. Uh, this is the type system that combines Rust uh, consort and Rust horn. So this is the syntax of our type. And here we consider only the integer and the reference of integer. So in other words, uh, we, uh, we don't consider the nested references like references of references of integer here. Anyway. Uh, here, uh, here we can we can see that uh, the reference type has both lifetime and the fractional ownership on the upper part of the its type, and then in addition, uh, the reference type also has uh, borrowing borrowing information B on its lower part, uh, and this consists of uh, lifetime and the fraction, uh, which means uh, which indicates. Uh, during which lifetime and how much how much ownership the reference lends to the others. So, for example, uh, please look at this program. Uh, this program uh, in this program, uh, the reference x and y is initialized as the uh, uh, aliasing references, and then we use we use both of them and to initialize the variable a. And then we update y, and finally we update x, and uh, try to verify the assertion. So our type system can type this like this. So here y borrows the ownership of x, uh, depending on the program point. So, but yeah, this is maybe it is a bit hard to read this on the slide. So. Uh, we show this typing as a diagram like this. So after the first line, uh, x lends 0 0.5 ownership to y, and it increases to uh, 1.0 ownership, full ownership after the second line. And uh, after the lifetime of y, I'm, uh, the lifetime beta ends, the x retrieves uh, all of its ownership. Sorry. So uh, we designed our type system based on consort, uh, and this type judgment is the, of the form like this. And we have here three uh, typing context and two updated environments. Uh, since we, uh, our type system is flow sensitive. And this is a uh, representative typing rule that, uh, for the let statement. And the key point is the, we express the ownership sharing as the type addition. 
The definition of type addition consists of mainly consists of two, two rules, uh, one of which is express the quantitative sharing of ownership, and one another is uh, shows the temporal uh, sharing of ownership. Now, by our type system, uh, we can uniformly type the example in consort and example in rust horn. Uh, in other words, uh, our type system successfully subsumes the both of them. And our type system has more expressive power than both. Uh, as for example, this program is, it cannot be typed by consort nor rust horn, uh, but our, our type system can handle this like this, but this is a bit large to express, uh, explain here, so uh, please read the paper if you're interested. So next, we, uh, we explain the verification method using our type system. Now, our verification method is an extension of Rust Horn's technique. Um, uh, our main difference is, is that in our method, the, all the all references are uh, converted to pairs. And another uh, difference is, sorry, another difference is the definition of borrowing. And in our type system, borrowing is the situation that a reference takes all the ownership of uh, another. So let's uh, look at the example before. And, and this example, uh, X is deprived of all its ownership in the, this alias statement. So we recognize, uh, we regard this point as the point at which the borrowing occurs. And using it, this information, we can translate the original program into the program without references uh, as the, almost the same way as the rust horn. So let's move on to our results. Uh, first, we have proved the uh, well typeness of our, of our type system. And uh, we also proved the soundness of our translation. That that is, uh, we show that well, a well-typed program will not fail if the translated program does not fail. And we also conducted preliminary experiments for some benchmark programs by manual typing and translation. We translate the original program into OCaml and verify them with uh, the verification tool Mochi. Uh, this experiment showed that yeah, our method uh, successfully uh, sorry, works correctly for the benchmark programs. <laughs> so this is the related bar work of our, our research, but we skip this here. And this is the conclusion. Uh, the goal of our research is automatically check the abs absence of assertion failure for the program with uh, mutable references, and we propose the borrowable fractional ownership types and the verification method for it based on Rust Horn. And this work makes the ownership types more widely applicable in the context of uh, automated verification. So thank you for listening. That is my <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, are there any restrictions for the uh, choices for the uh, running times, alpha and beta? Uh, um, if it is correctly uh, given, uh, there is no restriction. Uh, 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 however, yeah, uh, the lifetime has the ordering and the, uh, sorry, the given lifetime should uh, have some total order in its typing. Is that mean? Yeah, yeah. okay, so in general, there's no restriction. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. I'm trying to understand the fractional uh, uh, ownership a little bit more. Uh, so is, is, does it have uh, much of the purpose other than counting the number of references, for example, 1 by n? Could you, for example, sometimes have ownership that's 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, or does it always have to be 1 by n? Uh, so you mean the, the 
advantage from the reference counting? Hmm? Yeah, I mean, because in the, all the examples you showed, always had value either of a half or one yeah. by three. Can you, for example, have 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, or is it always basically just <coughs> reference counting? Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah there, there can be some uh, example programs that uses uh, multiple uh, references, uh, other uh, more than two, and uh, use, by using fractional ownership, we can uh, divide the 0 0.5 ownership to uh, 1 over 4 ownership and 1 over 4 ownership. And oh, so it will still always be of the form 1 by n? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Just a question about that. If you, can you ever join them? Like, you know, often like with static reference counting, you can get two references which are a third each. Then combine it to get a two-thirds. Um, sorry, could you say it again more slowly, please? So say you had a, f a function which took in three references with a third ownership each. Could you define it such that it returned two references, one with a third ownership, one with two-thirds ownership? Uh, yes, yes, you, you can define it. In that case, you could get 0.7 and 0.3. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, it, uh, pardon? I, I was guessing the might be Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> um, this seems to capture a lot of what unsafe Rust like, is used for, with the, like, apart from like, trying to assert the type of things. A lot of unsafe Rust is just to get around proving the mutability is correct. How, how much do you think of the standard library could be formally verified by using this? Uh, I, I think this, this is applicable for the, also for the unsafe Rust, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I want. Uh, it it depends on the program you want to verify. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have any intuition of like how how much of the total unsafe ownership, uh, unsafe usage, is this? Is it quite common or? Is it? Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I cannot understand your question quickly, so uh, please, uh, uh, so let's talk yeah, uh, after yeah. this. Thank yes. you. Okay, okay good. Uh, let's thank our speaker again.